Christ is all I need. I have no lack, cause Christ is enough for me. I have no lack, cause Christ is all I Distress when nothing makes sense, I find you.
I welcome you to this period of retreat. We are in the evening session. And in this evening session, we have an important message to consider. And that this with the family. And I'm praying that as we listen, the Lord will bless each and every of us, including our families, in Jesus' name. Shall you bow down our heads to pray? Father, we want to thank you for this session we are having now to consider the family. We are praying that, O oh Lord God, all that you have for us to make our family to be what you want it to be, you will give unto us in Jesus' name. Open our hearts, open our ears, and open our understanding so that, Father, in every the blessings of your word will be ours in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because you have answered us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. As I said earlier on, we are considering a topic relating to the family. And the topic is building a loving and lasting relationship in the home. Building a loving and lasting relationship in the home. And I want us to start by reading the scripture. In Colossians chapter 3, verses 18 to 21. Colossians chapter 3, verses 18 to 21. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband, as it is faith in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives, and be not bitter against them. Children, Obey your parents in all things, for this is where pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to hunger, lest they be discouraged. The subject of relationship within the family and the significance of love in the home, I emphasized over and over in the scriptures. The Bible emphasizes the significance of family unity and peace to foster love, to foster support, to foster spiritual growth of the entire household. God's purpose for the family is to be happy and to be united. But this purpose cannot be achieved without love and good relationship within the home. To start with, we need to understand what the home is and what types of relationship exist within the home. Ordinarily, home is defined as a dwelling place for people, especially families, a place where you live, a place where you have your abode, a place we are shared together. But then, the home we are talking about tonight is a Christian home. It is a place where Christ rules, where Christ reigns, and where Christ is giving total authority over the household. It's a place where members of the family dwell together Acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. It's a place where the Bible is read, the Bible is obeyed, and the Bible is accepted as their guiding light. But today, what are the types of relationship we can find in a home that exist within a home? Basically, there are two types of relationship. We have the husband-wife relationship. Two, we have the parents-children relationship. 
what is husband wife relationship a good husband wife relationship is essential for a happy and healthy relationship in the home that relationship is what exists between the husband and the wife the way they interact together the way they share together the way they do things together the way they communicate with each other the way they relate with each other that is the husband wife relationship and where a good relationship does not exist the family will disintegrate where the husband and the wife are not in agreement are not relating well god's purpose for the family can never be fulfilled but then what of parents children relationship is relationship that exists between the parents and the children is interaction between the parents and the children and is is what we try to impart onto the children so that i can help them to build up their life as they relate with us they see the examples in us and as you correct them as you relate with them they are able to imbibe some ethics some morals some principles that will help them to go up in life this is the foundation of peace upon which children will build their other relationships what do i mean by that their relationships when they go to school with their schoolmates their relationship with their teachers at school their relationship with with their, with their with their peers in the neighborhood if a good relationship does not exist between the parent and the children of course it will impact upon the relationship of those children with their neighbors with their friends with their mates and with other people that they come in contact with even including when they start to work it will also impact their lives when they start to work briefly we are going to consider this message under three edges remember i said the topic is building a loving and lasting relationship in the home we are divided into three parts number one precepts for an endearing and loving relationship in the home precepts for an endearing and loving relationship in the home two prerequisites for an endearing loving relationship in the home prerequisites for an endearing loving relationship in the home and three preserving with earnestness the love relationship in our homes let's go to point number 1 precepts for an endearing and lovely relationship in the home when turning to the scripture we can find men of god who had godly homes where love existed where the relationship was so cordial was so loving and we are every member of the family actually live together under the same roof, appreciate each other, love each other, but progressing each other. In fact, the Lord had to tell about Abraham in Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18. I'm reading for verse 18 and verse 19. Genesis chapter 18. 18 from verse 18 seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the heart shall be blessed in him for I know he, <clears throat> that we, he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the law to do justice and judgment that the law may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. That's God testifying about Abraham. That he knows Abraham. That Abraham, with the way he has seen him, rearing up his family, will continue to command his children, his also to follow after him. Because Abraham taught godly principles in the family, and which every member of the family in Bible. And Joshua has this to say about his own family. In Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served 
that on the other side of the floor, all the gods, all the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I believe in God. You and your house, you are going to serve the Lord. You and your entire, entire also will follow the Lord. Quickly, let's look at three things under this first topic. Number one, paramount relationship for everyone in the family. Number two, primary responsibility of everyone in the family. Number three, prescribed decisions enunciated in the family. Let's go to point number one. Paramount relationship for everyone in the family. For us to have an endearing and lovely relationship in the home, there's a kind of relationship that every member of the family must have. Every individual must have that personal relationship. And what is that relationship? It's a relationship with God. That is the beginning of an, of, of an endearing and loving relationship in the home. And this relationship with God starts with the new birth experience. And that's why the scripture says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Only those who are born of the Spirit of God can obey the word of God. Only those who are born of the Spirit of God can love like God loves. Only those who, are, who, who have the Spirit of God can actually practice the principles and the scripture for the family to be able to enjoy all the blessings of God. For us to have an enduring and love relationship in the family, therefore, every member of the family needs to have individual personal relationship with God through the new birth experience. It is this experience that enables us as individuals in the family to see the welfare of each other. It is this experience that helps us to push aside self-centeredness and seek the common goal of the family. Without this experience, everybody will want to be on his own. Everybody will want to be self-centered. Everybody will not see the welfare of each other, but when we have this experience in our lives, we seek the welfare of other people. In Genesis chapter 22, I'm reading from verse 7. Genesis chapter 22. I'm reading from verse 7. And as he spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Verse 9. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and burnt Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God. See, thou son will tell thy son, thy only son from me. Here we see a family that is godly. A family where the child, the parents know God. From the reaction and the response, from the reaction of Isaac here to his father, you will agree with me that this young boy actually had experience with God. He has he had seen the way the father has been worshipping God and said, my father, here is the wood. Here is the fire. But where is the lamb for the sacrifice? And he said, my son, don't bother yourself. God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. And the child believed. Because he knew that his father, he, as an upright man, will not do anything evil against him. Therefore, when he burnt him and put him on the altar, 
we never heard that Isaac was struggling with him. He submitted totally. Why? Because that child had had an experience with God. And he knew that what his father said, that my, my, uh, my God shall provide himself a lamb for the sacrifice, will surely come to pass. That is an example of an enduring and love relationship in the home where the child trusts the father, loves the father, believes the father, and knows that the father will never do any harm against him. We see in 2 Timothy chapter 1, another family, 2 Timothy chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. When I call to remembrance, the unfeigned faith that is indeed, we dwell first in thy grandmother Louis and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou start up the gift of God, which is indeed by the putting on of my hands. Here we see a family. The grandmother, the mother were godly, were righteous. And as they saw, they were able to bring up Timothy in the fear of God. And you know how valuable Timothy was in the kingdom of God. The great things that God used him to do. The, the churches that God used him to, 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 to establish and to edify because of the fact that he knew God right from the home. Let's go to point number two. Primary responsibility of everyone in the family. Each member and every member of the family, the parents, the children, has the primary responsibility to support each other, to care for each other, to watch over his, each other. That's a responsibility. That's a personal responsibility, primary responsibility that everyone in the family has over each other. And we do nothing as a family to bring the family into this repute. We watch over our actions, over our behavior. We do not want to do anything because of the love we have for the members of the family. We don't want anything that will tarnish the image and the integrity of the family. This is the way an endearing and loving relationship can be built in the home when every one of us love each other, care for each other, seek the welfare of each other, and promote the welfare of each other. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 9, we see a very, a very, a very, a very sad experience. That was at the beginning. This is a family. We are the first family. Let's see what happened. Genesis chapter 4, verse 9. And the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel, thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? This man came and killed his brother Abel out of jealousy, out of envy. Because his own sacrifice was not accepted, but his brother's sacrifice was accepted. He therefore decided to take, to take away his life. He was not watching over his family. And God made him to know that you have to watch over each other. Cain, where is our brother? He even had the effrontery to ask God, am I my brother's keeper? That is not a godly family. That is not a godly character. That is not what God expects. That's not what you want to see in the family. In Proverbs chapter 17. Proverbs chapter 17. Verse 17. A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. As children in the family, we have to stand for each other. We have to support each other. We have to encourage each other. We have to build up each other. We have to care for each other. We have to watch over each other. First Corinthians chapter 8, verse 13. First Corinthians chapter 8, verse 13. Wherefore, if it make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth, lest I make my brother to offend. That's a good trait of a, a family that has love, 
that have good relationship with each other. He says, if meat will make my brother to stumble, I will not even take flesh. He's trying to give up any, every other thing. If that thing will not in any way promote the progress, the success of his brother, if that thing will make his brother to fall, he will rather give it up than personally enjoy his own himself uh, at the discomfort, at the, at, 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 at the expense of his own brother. He said, if meat we make my brother to stumble, I will not even take flesh. That is the type of relationship that should exist in the family. Like I can give up a right in order that the entire family may be benefited and may progress together. But then, if we are going to have an endearing and love relationship, boundaries must be set within the family. That is the third point. Prescribed restrictions initiated in the family. We see that as the family grows, grows up, each member of the family starts to be conscious of his right, of his liberty. But the misuse and misunderstanding of this liberty, of this right, can cause chaos in the family. In fact, it can disturb the harmony, the peace, the unity in the family. To foster love relationship in the family, in the home. Right from the early life of the family, the parents must make sure that they put in place family value, that every member of the family we appreciate, that this is what we stand for in our family. These are the things we do in our family. These are the things we don't permit in our family. We set family values, not only that. We also set boundaries. We do, beyond which no member of the family can go. Yes, you have your personal liberty, but if your liberty, if your, uh, the exercise of your right will bring evil to the other person, will bring injury to the other person, then that liberty has to be curtailed. If you are going to have an endearly, endearly loving relationship, there will be boundaries, there will be restrictions, beyond which no member of the family should go. In 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. But take heed, lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stormy block to them that are weak. We should be conscious that our brothers, our sisters within the family do not have the same strength, the same knowledge, do not have the same capability to withstand some things. Therefore, we must make sure that we don't do things that will cause our brother or sister to stumble or to fall. In Galatians chapter 5, Galatians chapter 5, I'm reading verse 13. Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. For brethren, ye have been caught into liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love, serve one another. By love, we serve one another. We give up anything that we impair the peace, the unity, the love, the, the cooperation in the family. Let's go to point number two. Prerequisites for an enduring, loving relationship in the home. There are things that must be put in place if we want to enjoy real love in the family. You want to have a good relationship within the family. There are some things that must be put in place. If this is a lacking, we cannot really have true love and good relationship with one another. I'm dividing this session again into three parts. Number one, creating a lasting, loving relationship. Creating a lasting, loving relationship. Number two, criteria for a lasting, loving relationship. Criteria for a loving, lasting relationship. And number three, Christ-like love and relationship. Christ-like love and relationship. Point number one, creating a lasting love, a lasting, loving relationship. For an enduring love relationship to exist, the right atmosphere will be created. And it starts with true, perfect love for your spouse as your husband, true, perfect love for your wife. As, as a wife, true, perfect love 
for your husband because it is when as a, as a couple we show this to each other that our, our children will be able to imbibe what true love is. We'll be able to see practically how they should lay together in love within the family. But that's not all. We also must create a good atmosphere for the children. What do I mean by that? In the family, there must not be impartial or unequal love for the children. We must love the children equally. We must create an atmosphere where every member of the family we know, we believe that is equally important as the other. But when there is preferential treatment of a child above the other, we are already creating acrimony in the home, creating disorder in the home. Therefore, it's a requirement that if you are going to have an enduring love relationship, we must create the environment, the enable environment for, thus, for such a love relationship to exist. In Genesis chapter 29, Genesis chapter 29, let's see verse 30 and verse 31. Genesis 29, verses 30 and 31. And he went in also unto Rachel, and he loved also Rachel more than Leah, and served with him yet seven years. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened a womb, for Rachel was barren. The problem in the home of Jacob actually started with his own personal life. He had cheated earlier on, this time now, when he wanted to marry, his father-in-law play, also played a trick upon him, gave him the elder sister, Instead of, the, instead, of, instead of Rachel that he, he had labored for, he deceived him and gave him Leah. And when Jacob discovered this, he was not happy. But because of his law for Rachel, he still served seven other years. But then, because of unequal love for both wives, there was a problem. We are told that and when the Lord saw that Leah was eaten, eaten by Jacob, with that, under that situation, true love cannot prevail. Love relationship cannot prevail. He, he hated Leah. And God now opened a womb, but Rachel's womb was closed. That's one of the consequences of having a family where hatred exist. A family where God's love is not, in, is not in place. So, Jacob hated Leah. He showed impartial love. As a result of that, the whole environment, the children in themselves do not like each other. Because later on you will see that even otherwise, the servants, the, the handmaids of both Jacob of uh, both Leah and Rachel, that are children for Jacob. When Joseph saw their evil doing and reported to their father, that didn't go there well with them. And eventually, we shall see later, all the children, they hated Joseph. But the problem started in the life of Jacob himself. That is why as parents, we must make sure that we lay good example for the children to follow. In Genesis chapter 25, Genesis chapter 25, I'm reading verse 27 and verse 28. And the boys grew, and Esau was a corny hunter, a man of fear, and Jacob was a plain man, dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau, because he did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. This is another family. They did create an enabling environment where a joint love relationship can thrive, can exist. The father pitched his tent with the other son, and the wife pitched his tent with the younger son. As a result, the two of them were not on the same terms. Just because the parents refused to create an enabling environment for true love to exist within the home. That's the danger. 
of not creating an enabling environment for true love to manifest. In, cha in chapter 37, we see another example. Chapter 37 of uh, Genesis, verse 3. We are talking about creating a lasting love relationship. Without a good enabling environment, a lasting relationship cannot exist. Genesis chapter 37, verse 3. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren, brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. Here we see Jacob did not create a good environment for the children to love each other. Hatred, partiality, and professional treatment in the family will not make the family to, to coexist together in love. But then, if you are going to enjoy real loving relationship in the family, what, what are the criteria? I'm going to run them through. There are many, but I quickly run them through. That is the second point, criteria for a lasting, loving relationship. Criteria for a lasting, loving relationship. Now, write that word, relationship, vertically. And I'm going to take each data one by one. R, respect. If you want a lasting relationship in the family, husband and wife must have respect for each other. Not only that, the children as well must have respect for each other. You must avoid talking to each other in harsh tones, in raised voices. You must avoid anything that will create disorderliness in the home for a family to live in law. There must be respect for each other. And parents, let's listen. The children are watching. If as a father, you don't respect the mother of your children, the children are watching. You are planting something in them against you. That's my point. Or you are planting That's my point. Or you are planting something in them against the future. Because the only way they can know what a good family is, is through your relationship with each other as husband and wife. In First Peter chapter 3, First Peter chapter 3, verse 8. First Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Finally, be your of one mind. Have compassion, one of other. Love as better. Be pitiful. Be cautious. Be cautious to each other. E. Empathize with each other. Identify with each other's problems, challenges. Difficulties. That's how to bond together in a lovely relationship. Don't stand aloof when a member of the family is having some challenges. Get around him, get around her. And as a, as, 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 as a parent, when any child in the family is having some challenge, don't dissociate yourself from him. Don't show that you're not interested. It is your responsibility to make sure that you identify with such a child at such difficult moment. And children, when any of the parents are going through some challenges, it also behoves us to come around, to support them, to encourage them, to bear their body with them. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. Bear ye one another's bodies. And so, fulfill the law of Christ. As a family, we should bear one another's body. We should share one another's griefs, one another's success, one another's failure. Let's rally around each other to support each other, to beat up each other, to encourage one another, and to strengthen one another. That's how to build an enduring love relationship in the home. And love. Love each other. How? As Christ loves you. Husband, love your wife as Christ loves you. Wife, love your husband as Christ loves you. Children, love, love each other and love your parents as Christ loves you. The barometer of our love for each other is the love that Christ has for us. 
you love each other. Without love in the family, the family cannot live in good relationship. In Ephesians chapter 5, I'm reading verse 25. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Verse 28. So ought men to love their wives they are all, they are all, as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife, loveth himself. In Genesis chapter 50, we see a good example of a loving environment. In uh, Genesis chapter 50, verse 90, here is about Joseph. We all know the story about Joseph, how his brethren hated him and sold him to slavery, how he eventually became the second in command in Egypt, and how they very came to buy corn in the land of Egypt, and now their father was dead. And they thought, Joseph will now forget what they did against him many years ago. So fear came into their heart. What did they do after their father's death? Genesis chapter 50, let's see their reaction, their attitude, and what Joseph, and what Joseph said. Verse 18, Genesis chapter 50, verse 18. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for I am, am I, for am I in the place of God. But as for you, you thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save more people alive. Now, therefore, fear ye not. I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. That is the type of love that should exist in the family. Joseph forgot all that they have done against him in the past. He loved them with all his heart. We must not just only verbalize our love in the family. We must demonstrate it in practical terms. And please, love each other means having time to listen to each other. Objectively, every time to care for one another, that is part of love. A is appreciate each other and accept each other. We cannot all be alike. We all have different talents, different uh, uh, attributes. Therefore, let us appreciate the gift. Let us appreciate the talent that we all possess and see how we harmonize all for the benefit of the family, without envy, without, without anger. Appreciate what your brother and the family, what your sister does. And when somebody does something good for you or for a member of the family, let us show appreciation. Thank you. That's what thank you can go a long way. That was, I, 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 I appreciate it. It can go a long way. If you give it a gift to somebody, to a member of the family on, 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 on an occasion, maybe he has just been promoted in the space of work and you rejoice with him, you appreciate him. It's, it's enough to spur that person to want to do more. Let's now to appreciate each other and accept each other as we are. Each other, we have, we have our own faults. Let's overlook the faults and look at the good part of each other so that we can be able to live together harmoniously. T, temperance. That's very, very important. If you are going to have an enduring relationship with the family, you must learn to tame your temper and tame your tongue. Even when you say, yes, oh, I'm only speaking the truth. Yeah, when you're even speaking the truth, please speak that truth in love. Be tolerant of each other in 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. I'm reading verse 6. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 6. And to knowledge, temperance. And to temperance, patience. And to patience, godliness. I intercede for each other. As members of the family, let's learn how to pray for each other and take each other's needs, challenges, unto God in prayer. We are to pray for each other. By praying for each other, we help each other to overcome our challenges and our problems and our difficulties. Remember our time to pray for your parents. Have time to pray for the children, one by one. And as children, have time to pray for your siblings. Have time to pray for your parents, so that God himself may do great things in their lives. In James chapter 5, verse 16. James chapter 5, verse 16. Confess your first one to another. When you are going through some challenges, 
or you are afraid in one part or the other, confess your fault to one another, to a member of your family. So they can strengthen you, they can encourage, they can show you the path on how to overcome it. Confess your fault to another and pray one for another. Pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fire and prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Oh, stands for openness. Openness. Be open to each other. Be transparent to each other. Don't be secretive. Not only that, don't be diplomatic. Not only that, be open in your discussion with each other. Don't hide anything from each other. In second, the next one is nurse and nurse each other. Nurse each other. Nurse each other. What does that mean? Care for one another. Take care of each other. And see to the welfare of each other. Create time for each other to share together. To care for one another. In First Corinthians chapter 7. First Corinthians chapter 7. Verse 33. First Corinthians chapter 7. Verse 33. But he that is married, carry for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. Verse 34. There is difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried man carry for the things of the law, that she may be holy, but in body and in spirit. But she that is married, carry for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. No matter how busy you are with the work of God, care for your wife, care for your husband. Care for your children. Care for your parents. Take time to visit each other. Take time to see the wealth of one another. Take time to nurse each other. And as you do, the Lord will bless us abundantly in Jesus' name. Yes, support each other in the family. Render assistance. Render necessary help to each other. H, honor each other. Husband, honor your wife. Wife, husband, honor your husband. In first, and pay our children, Honor your parents. It is the command of God. First John, First Peter chapter three, verse seven. First Peter chapter three, verse seven. Likewise, your husband, dwell with them according to knowledge. Give it honor unto the wife. That's the Bible. Give it honor unto the wife. As for the new vessel, and as being years together, or the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Give honor to your wife. In Ephesians chapter five. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. Why? Submit yourself unto your own husband, as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husband in everything. Honor your husband as your head. Give him that position. Let him know that in the home he is the king. And all of you, you are subject to his leadership, you are subject to his direction, you are subject to his instruction. In Ephesians chapter 6, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2, honor thy father. Well, let's go to verse 1. Children, obey your parents in law, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment we promise. Children, honor your parents. Honor your parents. It is God's command. And the Bible tells us it is the first commandment with promise. What is that promise? So that I lay thy day may be prolonged on the face of the earth. Never do anything that will provoke each other. I invest in each other's de development. Spend whatever you can, your time as, as parents, assist your children at home. Well, especially when they are young or even when they are old. If there's any way you can help them in the assignment, in, in writing a sister to them, do so. Invest in them. And as a husband, invest in your wife. Let her, let her fulfill her, her dreams. Don't say, well, don't say, well, no. Uh, uh, you won't allow your wife to, to, to go be, to, 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 be, to, to, to prosper more than you. No. Invest in her. You know her passion. Encourage her. Let her develop that passion. So that she can, she, can, she can live a fulfilled life, a satisfied life, a life that is pleasing unto God and, and, and unto men. In the last letter is P, patience. Be patient with each other. 
be gentle with each other and try to understand each other's point of view. Don't just jump into conclusion. Listen to each other. Point number three, Christ-like love and relationship. That's what God expects in a family. Christ-like love. The type of love that is unconditional. The type of love that is unending. Christ himself showed us that example in John chapter 13. See what the Bible says about his law for us. About his law for disciples. John chapter 13 verse 1. Now therefore, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his soul, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. His love was unending. His love was unfeigned. His love was total. He loved them to the very end. Can I remind you? Even when Peter left the preaching of the word of God and went back to his fishing, to his, to his fishing net, what did Christ do? He went to meet him where he is and said, Peter, lovest thou me more than this? Not an angry word. No word of disappointment. Peter, you did this again? You've you, you deny me, now again, you, are, you, you, are, you have led others to, to, to leave the preaching of the word of God and see, see you at, at the bad page, fishing. No, not the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, Peter, love us me more than this. And that's the type of love that Christ expects us to have in the family. And in Genesis, uh, uh, John chapter 17, verse 10 to 17, we see Christ praying for his own disciples, showing us the law that he has for us all. Let's see a few of the verses. John chapter 17. John chapter 17. Let's read from verse 15. I pray not that thou should take them out of the world, but that thou should keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Signs by the truth, the truth, thy word is true. He spent his time to pray for them. Can I also remind us? That even on the course of Calvary, in John chapter 19, when he was going through a deep agony, he manifested love to his mother and to disciple John. In John chapter 19, verse 26, this is the cast -like love that Christ expects us to have in the family. When Jesus therefore saw his mother, when in agony, and disciple standing by, whom he loved, he said unto his mother, woman, behold thy son. Then said he to the disciples, to the disciples, behold their mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her on his own home. John understood what Christ was saying. Christ committed his mother to the hand of John. What a loving example for us to follow. And I pray this kind of Lord, the Lord will plant in us and every member of our family in Jesus' name. Let's go to point number three quickly. Preserve with earnestness the love relationship in the home. God wants love to reign in our home. And by the grace of God, true love will start to reign in our home in Jesus' name. I want to allow that, amen? Amen. Now let's look at three things under this heading as well. Perpetuating harmonious relationship between couples as partners. Perpetuating harmonious relationship between couples as partners. God has given the required blueprint for harmonious relationship between husband and wife. Let's know this. Husband and wife are co-partners. And the Bible says, they are joint ears. Therefore, true love must be shown to each other. And the Lord has given us the standard of love expected from us as husband and wife to each other. In Ephesians chapter 5, Ephesians chapter 5, let's read some selected verses there. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 24. Therefore, as the child is subject unto Christ, so let the wife be to the own husband in everything. Where the wife loves the husband, he, she will joyfully, willingly, cheerfully submit to the leadership of the husband. Verse 25. Husband, love your wives. He has loved the church and gave himself for it. That's his blueprint. Love your wife. As Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Verse 28. So ought men to love their wives 
as their own body. He that loveth his wife, loveth himself. Let your wife, let your children see that daddy has great love for mommy. And let, let, your, let, let your children see that mommy has great love for daddy. In Colossians chapter 3, Colossians chapter 3, verse 18. Colossians chapter 3, verse 18. Wives, submit unto your own husband as it is fit in the Lord. That's the standard of the scripture. That's how to maintain love. A love relationship in the home. Submit yourself unto your husband. No argument. As it is fit in the Lord. And husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Husband, you hear that? Do not be bitter against your wife. Verse 20. Children, obey your parents in all things. Your parents will not be as educated as you are. Obey your parents in all things. For this is well pleasing unto the law. First Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3, verse 6. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham. That's a good example for us as wives. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, call him Lord. Whose daughter ye are, as long as he do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. Sarah obeyed Abraham and accepted the leadership of Abraham over her, and even called her Lord, no language of disrespect, towards your husband. In verse 7, likewise, your husband, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. And as be years together of the grace of life. Be years together of the grace of life. We are just years together. Therefore, let's teach each other with cordiality, with love, with respect, with due regard. Let's teach each other with courtesy. Do so. We make us as couple to enjoy all the blessings of God in our marriage. Point two, promoting a relationship between children and parents. Parents should show unqualified affection towards their children. Even when you are making correction, let it be made in law. When discipline the children, let it be a discipline that is commensurate with the offense that have been committed. Let the children see love in your discipline. You don't discipline to kill, to hinder, to destroy. You don't discipline by cursing your child. By injuring your child, by flitting wounds on him. That is not this. That has gone beyond correction. But when you are correcting, you are correct because you don't want your child to go to fall into the, in, in, in the same error in future. Let us discipline with law. Let us, let us correct in law on the other hand, children. You should honor your parents. Dishonoring and despising one's parents and disobeying them, disregarding them, ignoring them, despising them has great consequences. And God will not easily overlook such a thing. And children, among yourself, let there be no heavy rivalry among you. I encourage one another to develop each other's potential and support each other. In Ephesians chapter 6, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Children, obey your parents in law, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the heart. That is the commandment of God to, to, to children. Then verse 4, and ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrong. Let's avoid what we made the children to have bitterness against us, to have hatred against us. Don't provoke them. Don't do things that made them to feel unwanted. Do not provoke your children to run, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the law. Colossians chapter 3, verse 20. Colossians chapter 3, verse 20. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is why pleasing unto the Lord. And fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Don't Always assume 
Let there be some trust, level of trust in your children. Don't just prejudge or, or, or presume that this is what he has done. Without hearing him out, without hearing him out, it can make them to be discouraged. And once they know that you don't believe them, they will close up. I pray God will help us in handling these children so that we'll be able to build them up in the fear of God in Jesus' name. Point number three, prophets of hearty relationship between children and parents. The prophets. There is a great prophet. Wonderful blessings. When children and parents live together in harmony, there is progress. There is prosperity. When we live together in harmony, we can succeed, we succeed together. But when we do not do so, the consequence will be hatred, bitterness, and all sorts of disharmony within the home. In Psalm 133, Psalm 133, I'm reading verse 4. Psalm 133, verse 4. Or let's start from, from sorry, verse 1, from verse 1 to verse 3. Behold, how good, how pleasant it is for brethren, for family, to dwell together in unity. It are the precious omen upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments, and the dew, as the dew of Ammon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even lie forevermore. I pray God's blessings will rest upon your home in Jesus' name. In 2 John, 2 John, verse 4. 2 John has just one chapter. 2 John, verse 4. I rejoice greatly that I found other children walking in truth as you have received a commandment from the Father. There is joy. When I pay children, take the lessons they have learned in the home, practice it outside, and we start to hear good news about our children. That at school, our children is the best, they are the best BA students. We get to a place of work. Oh, they say, thank God. In fact, I've never seen such a wonderful child like this. And when other children meet you as parents, oh, they say, oh, I wish my mother, my father would have been like this. Mommy, daddy, I love the law that exists among you. When there is unity, when there is law, when there is cooperation among us, there will be joy in the heart of everybody. And there will be peace, there will be progress, and each one of us will succeed in the various areas of endeavor. I pray that from today, through law, through God's relationship, we start to coexist in our family in Jesus' name. Shall I bow our heads to pray together? Father, I want to thank you and bless you for the things you have taught us. In, through, in this message, we are praying that, oh Lord God, the grace, oh Lord, to maintain love and good relationship within our home. Lord, you grant unto us in Jesus' name. And the things you have revealed unto us that is affecting good relationship in our home that we need to deal with and take away from our home. Lord, the grace Father and to give them up and do the necessary correction in our own personal life and in our own family, grant unto us in Jesus' name. I pray that Father that peace, love, joy, progress, prosperity, we abide in, any fam in every family in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen.
open my heart truly desires I find in you all that I Distress when nothing makes sense, I find you. Go dear, go dear, no me yes, we are. Go dear, go dear, no me yes, we are. Christ is all I need. I have no lack, cause Christ is enough for me. I have no lack, cause Christ is all I need. Truly desires I find in you all that I am, all that I have is from you in my distress when nothing makes sense. I find you. Oh, yeah. 
Christ is all I need. I have no lack, cause Christ is enough for me.
Truly desires 